Josh, I understand the foundation of your diamond experience is based on STI's rotary grinders, as opposed to say a planetary system. I also understand there are significant differences between what the industry refers to as a prep diamond and a polishing diamond. So with that, I'd like to throw out some common used terminology and have you provide us with your insight. So Josh, give us your definition of a resin bond diamond. A resin bond diamond is any diamond that's gonna be used for polishing. Uh, when it comes to the, the physical description of the tool itself, it's usually gonna be Velcro backed. It may have uh, the traditional wall, waffle type style uh, face on it where it's got individual small segments. It also could be ones that have bigger segments on it. But the way that I distinguish um, between a resin diamond and a metal diamond appearances aside is if I'm going to be polishing a floor, then a resin diamond is what I'd be using. So would you say a resin diamond is exclusively used for polishing concrete? That's fair to say, or, you know, maybe, maybe a hone, maybe a thin mill coating system that, that could, that might require uh, more of a hone than a metal bond could achieve. But for the most part, and in general, resin bond would be exclusively used for polishing concrete or polishing a surface. Which is a segue into the next question is define a metal bond. Um, with that being said, would you say a metal bond is exclusively for prep? Yes. Uh, it could be also used for honing, which would be a portion of a polishing process where we're trying to re refine the surface of the concrete or the surface to have less noticeable scratches. So there could be a metal bond that is being used to strip epoxy coating, and there also could be a metal bond tool that's being used to close up the scratch pattern before the resin bond were to take over. So metal bond is definitely a catch-all phrase that covers a whole bunch of different tooling, but in general, it's going to be a metal back tool, uh, metal bonded diamonds, which means it's a more aggressive synthetic diamond uh, in, in the setting of the tool. And then also the attachment almost always in my experience is going to be some kind of mechanical attachment, not a Velcro attachment because they're traditionally heavier because they are metal backed. So kind of the, to summarize, a metal bond diamond, from what I'm understanding you correctly, can be used in a raw concrete situation to create profile for an incoming application like an epoxy or coating, where it can also be used for removing a coating or thin set or something along those lines too. It's just a variation of the metal bond diamond itself. Correct. Yeah, the different, the different face designs, the different segments, the different um, grits, the different bonds, all that can fall, will fall under the umbrella of a metal bond. So again, it's a very general term, but it would be uh, any metal tool that goes under a grinding machine to do, let's say anything but actual resin polishing, cause, just because of the nature of the tool. So from prep to honing, let's say. Okay, so that begs the next question. You have resin for polishing, metal for prep. Um, I've heard the term transitional and hybrid diamonds. So I'm assuming that's to be used somewhere in between those two processes? Yeah, transitional is probably the most accurate term that could be used for that tool. Um, it's another way to say it is it's kind of a bridge tool. It's the tool that in polishing is going to take the process from the aggressive scratch of a metal bond and then make that scratch less aggressive or uh, let's say a, a higher frequency. So the peaks and valleys between the scratches uh, are not as great. So that then after that tool, that hybrid or that transitional is finished, the resin bond tooling, which is a much finer cutting tool, can then polish the floor from that point forward. Uh, so transitional, hybrid, it just depends on the different manufacturers, but uh, either term works just to indicate that it's a mixture of both. Because when I go from an aggressive metal to a finer resin, it's a jump, too much of a jump to go from a pure metal to a pure resin, which is why the industry all systems that I've seen all have some kind of a transitional tool. Okay. Uh, let's jump right and talk about the composite of the diamond itself or the, the whole piece. Um, and you, give us your definition of what a matrix is. I've heard that term used multiple times. Um, is it the, the material that surrounds the diamond or what, what is that? Matrix, is, it, well, it's, it also could be exchanged for bond. Uh, bond strength or the hardness of a tool. Uh, matrix basically means the bonding material or the various types of powders that are used when the diamond segments are pressed together. That's like the glue that holds the diamond chips themselves in place. So when I look at a segment on a tool, let's say 
the matrix would be the material that's between the sparkly diamond crystals. That's what holds it together. That's also where a lot of the, the trade secrets hide in the tools. I'm not a tool maker, but the diamond itself is a, the diamond chip itself is important, of course. But the way that that crystal or crystals are bonded together is going to determine how well they stay in place to do their job of cutting the surface before the diamond is dulled out or becomes spent to the point where the matrix will expel it. And that's just a function of abrasion. But matrix basically is the glue or the bonding that holds those diamond crystals in the shape of that segment. Okay, so now we have the actual diamond itself being held together with the matrix. Um, let's get into grits. I've seen numbers from a, a triple zero grit, you know, up to a 3000 grit um, on a resin. Kind of go through um, you know, what grit, grits are associated with what diamonds and even a little more of when you would use a particular grit. Are some grits associated primarily or exclusively with prep and other ones with polishing? Um, is there a crossover? Um, just kind of give us your definition or explanation of what a grit is. With grits, if anybody is familiar with like sandpaper, sandpaper is probably the most universal way to compare a diamond grit to um, a grit that people can kind of understand as far as the so-called system. The lower the grit, the more aggressive it is. Same as in sandpaper. So that means the lower the number that's given for the grit of the diamond, let's say a 16 grit, which is an aggressive size, that is going to be more aggressive than say a 30. A 30 grit is going to be approximately half the size of the 16 because what that number indicates, and it's going to vary by manufacturer, there's no universal standard, but it's going to indicate the screen size of the diamond crystal and then how it's graded to determine what I'm going to say is a 16 or a 30 grit. From a practical standpoint and the way a diamond cuts, it, we're, it, it's a good numbering system because when I hear 16 grit and I'm thinking that's larger than a 30, well, the bigger the crystal, then it stands to reason the bigger the scratch. So the more aggressive the tool is, the more it's going to bite into that surface. Now, that's not always a standard rule that can be followed with regard to the way that the different diamond grits will cut. But most important is to remember that if the lower the number is the larger grit then, or a more aggressive grit, then a higher number is going to be a finer cut. This would be important you know, for polishing, let's say, for the beginner. I definitely would want to know ahead of time that a 200 grit is more aggressive than, let's say, a 400 grit. It's not uncommon for beginners to perhaps start with a 400 grit and then follow up with a 200 grit, which means they're going backwards which means it's going in the wrong sequence. So again, there's no global standard for grits, but when it comes to the numbering system, we're, we're lucky in some regards that whatever history there is in the abrasive industry, to my knowledge, all the different abrasives start with the lower number being the most aggressive to the higher numbers being the less aggressive or more fine in the nature of the scratch. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed this first segment of the BMD Learning Series discussion on diamonds. Please join us next week for the second installment and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share if you found this video informative and beneficial to your business. And don't forget to click that bell icon to be notified when we post a new video.